Hey, so I just wanted to show you around my uh, custom mapping that I've done for my Gemini mixer. I've got the Gemini PMX10, uh, which is a MIDI enabled mixer. I'm using Serato, uh, and I'm also using uh, a Rain SL2 because this mixer is not DVS enabled for Serato. It's not a, uh, a native mixer. So what I've done uh, is try and match the mapping as, as much as possible uh, from factory into the MIDI controls. Uh, so each pad is now triggered by the pads down here. Uh, and I've also got full control of the effects on and off and tweaking them here, uh, as well as using the selector knob to go through my library. A couple of cool other things I've done is uh, with the sampler here, I can select the sample banks that I want to use here. So I can use that to change the colors of the sample banks. And um, when the samples are playing, uh, it goes green. <laughs> And I've also got the uh, loop roll uh, trigger in here as well. Um, and I can change the loop size of the loop roll up here with the loop selector, which is just here. So I can change that using the knob. I can switch back to Q mode and I've got all the cue points. Uh, I've also mapped it to bring up the, uh, hit the samples button, it'll bring up the sampler. Uh, hit this button on this side, it'll bring up the effects. Um, and I'm just going to go into a little bit more about how I've done the, the MIDI lighting now. So, the MIDI output lighting, how have I done that? Well, as I'm sure you'll all know, um, to map a MIDI device, you hit the MIDI button there and hit the control that you want to map. So I'm going to map this pad just here. Let's hit go on that. All right, press or move the control that you, oh, press or move the MIDI control that you wish to assign. I want to do this pad, so hit that pad. That's done. Make sure lighting is turned on. Okay. Come over, hit your MIDI button. Go to settings. Hit save. Okay, so that's saved that. So now when we go over to our. MIDI information, and you can find this by going, if you're on Mac, go to uh, Music, Serato, MIDI, XML, and there's our demo XML. Open that up, and here's all our mapping information for that one pad. And you can see that it's called uh, Cue Point. This is the cue point information here, and this is what it wants to do when you hit that cue point. Okay, and the inf if you look just around about here, there's some MIDI information. Uh, and that MIDI information is saying when you hit that note on, it needs to be 127, which in this case uh, emits that coloured light. Uh, and then when the MIDI note is off, it wants to be at zero. Now, if you want any lights to be on uh, without hitting them, you need to change this value here. And if you want your lights to be a different colors if your device allows that and you need to change that device here now it varies from device to device depending on what you're doing um, and what device you're mapping as to what that value would be and what color um, but from experience of mapping this device i know that if i hit one and then hit three that should be red and that should be green one is green three is red so while the note is off it should be red and when the note is on, should be green. All being well. So, let's save that. Okay. Now, when we go back to Serato, if we hit load on that again, and look down to our deck, when it is off, it is red. When it is on, it is green. And it is that simple. All you need to do now is map the rest of the pads and the information will be in there like that. You need to note what Q point it is and what the Q ID is, uh, where we're looking. Q point, slot ID zero, so that usually is one, and so on and so forth. So slot ID zero, slot ID one, all the way up to seven. And that will be it for those pads. Same again for any of the other buttons that you want to map. They will come up with this uh, alias name on, value equals one, alias name off value equals three for each command you can usually suss out what the command is by reading this and then 
uh, change the values accordingly, but I'm saying what you need to do is go to uh, each manufacturer's um, manual and see what the manual says. Uh, one thing to note, so if I now save that, well, I've saved that. If I try and now map anything, anything else, one of the things that you'll notice, so let's go and map another control. So turn you off, hit MIDI, let's do the next pad. So the next pad, right, let's go that one down there. Okay, turn MIDI off, hit save. When I hit save and reopen up the XML here, okay, you can see that the next pad's information is in there now. But you will also notice for the pad that we have edited it, uh, edited, it has duplicated that information. Um, and that's not something you need to worry about massively, but uh, it does make it harder to find the ones that you want to edit and want to make work. Um, it, yeah, it duplicates the lines of code underneath it uh, because it's saving the whole map, but uh, whatever you've written stays on top, so that's what it references first. So if you're really pedantic about it, you can go in and tidy it up and delete all the duplicated stuff, or you could be like me and just leave it and it'll be fine. But that's about it. So yeah, that's how to map a MIDI device. So, all being well, I can now hit my Gemini PX to PMX10 map in, hit load, hey, and it all jumps back into life. And that's my cue points and everything. Happy days.